All right, what's up guys? This is Ryan from Elevate Security. Now, in this video, I wanted to go over exploiting one of what is perhaps one of the most commonly seen vulnerabilities across CTFs, especially OSCP and uh, things of that nature. Now, I've had the advantage of already at least attempting the OSCP, going through a lot of lab machines, going through an exam, and I will say, without giving more information away than I'm allowed to. I will say as a very general statement that this vulnerability is one of the most common ones that I see um, and have to exploit. So definitely one that I would say definitely will help you to learn if you have an interest in those things. Now, the vulnerability that I am speaking of is the XML external entities injection or XXE exploit. Now, I'm going to be showcasing how to do that. Now, before I do, I want to mention that what can this vulnerability do for you, right? If you're able to exploit XXE, you will get uh, the ability to read any file uh, on the system that that account has access to. So typically, it's not going to be running as root. So typically, you won't be able to you know, say read the Etsy shadow file or do any of those super user type of uh, read access to stuff. So what you can do though, is you can read all the other files that that account has access to, which sometimes can be pretty juicy. Sometimes you, uh, in the case of this hack the box machine here, we'll be able to read an SSH key and get SSH access as another user on the system. Now, this isn't always possible, of course, but a lot of times, yeah, you can get some pretty good information that can help you exploit the machine in another way to get access. Uh, in this case, in the case of this box as well, you can uh, find a Python deserialization vulnerability by finding an endpoint that uh, you can pass some data to. When it deserializes it, you can get a shell, but I won't be covering that, right? I'm covering XML external entities, but I wanted to show you or explain to you what's possible with it first, right? Now, this one is kind of CTFE in the style that, or in the manner that it actually tells us what XML elements are required. However, there'd be other ways to get this information if it was, say, a commercial site. Maybe we could find some documentation to see what, what the format of the XML markup is that it's expecting and uh, we could find it that way. But in the case of this, this isn't any kind of commercial product, so they just went ahead and told us that it's expecting these three uh, tags here. So the first thing that we can do is we can go ahead and create a file, a test file, test.xml, let's say. And if we go ahead and edit that file, we can just put some test data here, right? Obviously, this is not XML, but it doesn't really matter for the for the case of this, right? It's just ASCII text. That's fine for now. I am proxying my traffic on Burp. I'll mention that as well. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is browse to that file, and we will go ahead and upload our test file here. Now we got an error, and I think that's because you know it didn't have what it was expecting, but that's also fine, right? What we really wanted to do was get this request logged in Burp, and we have that now, so we can send it through a repeater. I'm just gonna hit Control R to do that. And like I was saying earlier, it gave us what it's looking for, so now we can just craft that, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change this instead of text data as the body of our file what I'm going to instead do is give it the elements I'm going to give it you know some kind of like wrapper element and then within that I'm going to go ahead and give it the ones that it, it wanted from us right so we could give it author with the text author and it could be any text, anything could go in between here. I just want to be able to visually confirm that it's doing what I think it's doing. That will make sense in a minute. Maybe it didn't make sense for right now. It's okay. 
So I'm just going to basically just give it the markup that it's expecting with some dummy data in between. So now that I've done that, uh, one last thing is, well, the content type is good. Text XML, that's what we should have. So let's go ahead and try to send that. All right, so now because we have it in the correct format that it was looking for, it gave us a 200 OK instead. And here it says process blog post, author, subject, content. So what, what putting this information in here allowed me to do was to see if it returned that data, which it did. Now, if this was configured in a vulnerable manner, not, you know, allow, what the vulnerable manner being, if it was allowing external entities, this is where uh, we could potentially leverage one of these fields uh, to reflect some files on the system, whichever ones we, we go for. Now, to, to facilitate this, and I'll, if I can remember, I'll include this link in the description, I would go to all the, all the things payloads. This is a GitHub repository, and it has some sample XXE stuff that we can try. Well, I guess I should have turned off burp for this, but I think it's okay. So if I scroll down on this, I'll see XXE injection. That's what I'm looking for here. All right, so here are our different options. Um, there's a lot of different pay potential payloads, as you can see. Um, so for the proof of concept here, I'm going to try one of the Linux ones because one thing that I know from the Nmap scan of this box is that it is a Linux box. So let's just go with this second one here. Either of them should work, but let's just go with this one. And of course, we're going to need to keep these fields here, these uh, these tags, because remember, those, those ones were required. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to tweak this a little bit. Now, when you see this XXE here, this is the variable of our external entity. This is like the variable name. We could change this to whatever we wanted it to be, right? Like we could, uh, we could change it to um, XML injection, right? XMLI or something, right? And this is how we call it with the ampersand. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove this, this foo tag, because instead of the foo tag, we're going to actually put it in here in one of these. So let's put this in... Uh, in place of where we had the subject before. So we call this external entity value with the ampersand and the variable name that we declared up here, which could be anything, right? Uh, so let's see. I think that should work. Let's try that out. Yeah, and there you go. So now you see here that instead of the, you, we saw author here, right? But instead of, uh, you know, we used to just print out subject, now this is where we're getting the output of that file. So in this case, we wanted to see the Etsy password. So we, we essentially, we have LFI on the system, local file inclusion. We can view whatever that account has access to viewing, honestly. Um, so this isn't like remote code execution or anything. We're only able to, like, say, view files and stuff like that, right? So whatever file we wanted to view, we just put it in here in place of file. But this is about as far as I wanted to go as far as showing you how to exploit XXE because this is, from here, it's pretty much, okay, what files do you want to look into? Which stuff do you want to see? You want to fish around? Now, there's ways to improve this. Like, we could put this into a script format using Python, and we can actually create our own command line tool to do it. I'm not going to demo that in this video per se, but uh, just making you aware of that. Uh, but yeah, this is really helpful. I mean, even from this, we can see this user on the box, a git user, all these different user accounts, right? So yeah, I hope this was of help. And uh, yeah, I'll be covering some more vulnerabilities web app related in the coming videos. So definitely hit the subscribe button and, you know, like the video and stay tuned for more uh, OSCP related content. And I will see you guys in the next video.